Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's Rackspace Cloud Control Panel walkthrough. My name is Iti and I'm part of the cloud onboarding team here in Rackspace Asia Pacific region. The aim of this video is to make sure you know how to make the most of your Rackspace Cloud account. For this, I'd like to take the next 30 minutes or so to go over the different features available in our control panel and how you can use them. Of course, we understand different businesses will have different needs. So if you have any questions during this walkthrough, or if you would like to have some you know, a one-to-one -one walkthrough, which is more tailor-made for your needs, uh, just feel free to get in touch with us. I will include our phone numbers and email address in the description of this video. So let's get started. Um, this is the URL of the control panel, mycloud.rackspace.com. And I'm just going to log in to my personal account. To start the uh, demo if you uh, as you can see if you click on need help logging in uh, you can easily reset your password or get back your username if you do forget them um, so click in log in so now you will see that I have enabled two-factor authentication in my account uh, what this means is that Rackspace will send me an SMS every time I try to log in. So the passcode that was sent to me is, uh, we'll go into two, uh, more details about two-factor authentication uh, a bit later, but let's start with uh, the support tab at the top right-hand corner. Uh, because that can be hugely important. If you do run into any issues at any time, Rackspace Technical Support is always here to help you 24 by 7. So for urgent uh, assistance or if you need immediate uh, response, uh, feel free to call in on any of these numbers. Uh, for any quick questions, you can start a live chat uh, right here. And you can also create a support ticket for uh, more in-depth or complex issues where you might need to um, include, uh, you know, some screenshot of a problem you're having. Um, and also, if you want to keep a record of uh, the issue for um, later use. Um, back to the support tab, um, this side of the screen is referring to all of our support documentation. So if you click on, uh, for example, the cloud server being started guide, you'll see it covers all the basics about that product, right? Um, so Rackspace has very good documentation. A, a lot of these articles uh, will have step-by-step -step directions, including command line codes for you to accomplish certain tasks. Um, there will be frequently asked questions and more advanced articles. So do take a look at the Knowledge Center. Uh, chances are you'll find your answer here. Um, if you are planning to use uh, the Rackspace application programming interface or the software development kits to um, automate some process uh, and integrate your application with Rackspace Cloud products, uh, then you can make use of all the documents here and if you do run into any um, specific issues with the API or with the SDK, uh, just reach out to our 24 by 7 support and they would be happy to help. Um, there's also the Rackspace uh, community, which has a product forum, application forum, developers forums. So a lot of, uh, it's pretty active as you can see, and it will have a lot of useful information for you as well. Okay, so back to the control panel. Um, I'll quickly go over the account administration stuff at the top right hand corner under the account tab. So we'll start by billing and payments. Uh, that's the first option. Uh, it's a pretty standard page as you can see. And you will have um, 
the soft copy of the invoice here. You can download the PDF or the Excel version as well. And it's pretty detailed. Okay, um, so back to the billing home and edit your payment details here as well. Okay. Uh, keep in mind at this side of the screen, there's usually some helpful links and articles uh, pointing to more details. For example, in this case, it will point you to the billing facts. Um, under account, the second option is usage overview. Um, this can be uh, pretty useful. So you can check throughout the current cycle how much money you are spending for each of the Rackspace Cloud products. Um, keep in mind, this only gets updated every 24 hours, so it's not real time, but still pretty useful. Um, and then under account settings, you can obviously update all the information you need. Um, and then you can enable two-factor authentication and generate some recovery codes in case you lose your phone. Um, keep in mind, security question can be very important. If you call in to the Rackspace 24 by 7 support, then um, they will confirm the security question to make sure it's really you. Um, also, you will need the API key if you install any third-party apps in your account or, you know, if you use any of the API bindings, basically. Um, under the account administration tab, you also have user management. So if you have uh, multiple people using the account, we'll always recommend you to use, um, you know, create separate users for them. Uh, usernames are unique and cannot be changed later, but obviously these can be updated by your users later. Um, security question, as I mentioned earlier, is important. Make sure your users also know these, uh, their security question and the answer. Um, for product access, uh, there can be different levels of access depending on your needs. Um, so I would recommend you to use the custom par product access uh, just because it gives you more uh, control of uh, which exactly which products can be accessed by a user and to what level, right? Um, other than the product, uh, you can also take a look at the billing information. So, for example, if you have a purely technical contact, you might not uh, want them to have access to billing. Um, but if you have a billing contact, um, you might want to give them that access. Admin just means that they are able to pay your bill. Okay, um, next, uh, the contact type. So when you set up your monitoring alerts, if you choose the contact as technical contact, they will basically um, receive all those monitoring alert emails. So, and if you uncheck the use primary contact details, you are able to enter the phone number as well, which can be very important now because in case of emergency, if Rackspace is not able to contact you, they should be able to contact your uh, technical content, right? Um, so obviously you can update the permissions uh, for a user later on. Um, so let's uh, move. And of also, if you need, um, some extra service level. Um, if you're not happy with what you have, you think you need some of these uh, more advanced support options, you can um, also apply for them here. But keep in mind, there will be different uh, pricing uh, levels, okay? So let's go on to the products, um, servers, so there is basically two different ways you can um, deploy your solution. One is to create a basic cloud server, uh, as I will go over now. So this is virtual cloud server. Uh, you choose uh, the region, which is the data center where you want to host the server, the name, and then you can also choose from any of the options available here. Okay, so let's say I go with um, CentOS 7, 
PVHVM is just a, a hypervisor uh, virtualization technique. Um, so scrolling down, then I can choose, um, you know, different um, flavors depending on my needs. So let's just go over um, the 1GB one right now. Keep in mind, there is whenever there is a service cost, uh, this is minimized for managed infrastructure service level. It's a minimum of 50 across all the servers used in that month across all regions. Okay. Um, so for more details on price, uh, feel free to go to um, rackspace.com.hk slash calculator. And this can be a very good tool for you to uh, figure out your prices. Um, okay, so if you choose advanced options, you're actually able to specify the hours. Um, so we'll just go back to the control panel um, for advanced options. If uh, for Linux server, you have any SSH keys, you can add them here um, or, you know, you otherwise you will have a randomly generated um, admin password for that server, which you will be given once you click on create server. Uh, for the networks, um, by default, you are connected to these two networks. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Both of the networks are important for most applications. So don't uncheck them unless you have some very special requirements. If you need a private network, you can also add it here. Um, of course, you can add in the SSH key and the private network later on if you need to, right? Um, so I'll just go ahead and click on create server. And you will be prompted with the root admin password of that server. Um, make sure to save it somewhere because um, obviously uh, you, it will not show up again. But of course, um, you can um, click on the actions tab here and change your password um, and some other actions you can take with your server. Um, you'll see it uh, once the server finishes building. Um, so if you go back to the server's list, you will see um, the server was building and it's finished building already. Okay. So for all these servers, I will recommend you to um, set up monitoring and some sort of backup. Okay. So for monitoring, uh, it's completely free of, free of charge. So you can have uh, as much proactive monitoring of the server as you like. Uh, let me just show you from uh, one of the okay, server that I already have set up. So if I scroll down, there's a number of um, monitoring checks set up and I can edit the details there. We'll have another section later, uh, another video later, uh, describing monitoring in more details if you like. Uh, but for now, you can see that you know a lot of graphs can be obtained from here. Uh, but back to the control panel, um, monitoring checks are really easy to set up, and there's two different types of checks. So for these checks, uh, you don't need an agent. But if you want to do some internal checks uh, about the memory CPU, uh, then you can easily set up uh, the monitoring agent. It's also free of charge. So you just follow all the uh, installation guides available here. It's pretty easy to follow. Um, I followed it myself, as you can see, right? So back to the control panel. Uh, we'll highly recommend you to uh, create a schedule of uh, daily or weekly backups. Okay. Keep in mind, uh, this image is just taking a snapshot of your whole system disk and um, saving it as an image. So this is uh, on a best effort basis. So 
if your um, server has, for example, a database which keeps uh, constantly keeps changing, then this is not the best option for your um, backup. And uh, you would need to, uh, for databases, you would need to use a native uh, database dump uh, backup system and then followed up by cloud backup possibly. So that's the cloud backup, right? Um, so for managed infrastructure clients, the backup agent is not installed. You need to install it yourself. For managed operations clients, the ma uh, backup is um, agent is installed automatically as soon as the server is created. Um, keep in mind for managed infrastructure service level, the backup agent uh, does come with some cost. So I believe it's about 11 US dollar per server per month uh, for the Hong Kong data center, all right? Um, also, if you do need some extra disk space, but not extra RAM or computing power, then consider using these um, block storage volumes. Um, and you can obviously, um, there is some size limitations um, and you can attach up to 14 of these volumes to a single server. So that's pretty cool. And if you want to know more about some of these options, feel free to go ahead and click on them and it will show you um, the rest. Uh, so that was all about um, cloud servers. But before we move on from this topic, let me quickly show you um, another way you can deploy your solution, which is by creating a stack. Uh, this can be found under orchestration um, in the main menu. So by creating stack, let's uh, begin by choosing the region again, like the data center. And then you can see that you can choose from any of the application templates available here. Um, and these are all following racks based, based practices. So they're pretty secure and good. Um, you'll see there's Rails, Redis, PHP, LAMP, Node.js, Magento, Drupal, and a lot more, right? ASP.NET as well. So right now I have chosen WordPress. And if I click on these options, I can see exactly what is included, right? Um, so you'll see a lot of um, additional options are being installed to uh, optimize the performance of the uh, application. So Varnish, for example, is a caching service and l -Sync will uh, sync the web for content across multiple servers. Um, so that's it for all stacks. Actually, let me just show you this. Uh, if you click next step, you'll be able to choose some options. Um, as you can see, um, if you choose create stack, there may be some uh, limitations, such as um, you can't choose CentOS or Red Hat if that's what you want. Um, in those cases, you'll probably need to start from creating a single server and then configuring it uh, with your desired uh, softwares. All right, um, so under servers, um, let's go for load balancer now. Um, so load balancers uh, can be very important. Uh, if you want to make your solution highly available, then our load balancer is a very good choice. Um, it is highly available and has failover uh, in case your load balancer fails for some reason, then it will uh, f fall over to, fail over to another load balancer with the same IP address, okay? So again, you can choose the region and um, make to choose the protocol, choose the algorithm, and add cloud server nodes behind your 
suppose I have the same um, website in these two servers and the website content is synced, then I can add it here, okay? So for just about $12 uh, per month, you can make your solution highly available. And if you click on load balancer here, let's see. Um, basically, um, load balancers um, also give you a static public IP address, as you can see. So all your DNS records will point to this. Um, and then you can choose uh, enable a lot more features and functions such as health monitoring so that um, the load balancer will check whether a server is uh, up and running before sending any traffic to it. Um, you can limit some malicious abuse uh, by um, you know, putting a limit on the maximum number of simultaneous connections from a single IP address. Um, session persistence, content caching. Um, you can also uh, take the load of SSL termination off your servers and do this at load balancer level. But keep in mind that will add additional um, cost to your load balancer pricing because of the SSL um, certification, right? Licensing. Um, so there's a lot more you can do. Um, and some basic access rules as well. Uh, over time, as you have uh, the data from the uh, traffic in the, coming to the load balancer, you will be able to see the traffic um, patterns and stats as well. Okay, so that was all about load balancers. Um, let's go on to networking. Uh, which also contains the load balancer portion, which we have already covered. Um, cloud networks, which I mentioned, if you need a private network, you can do that. Uh, for cloud DNS, this is also uh, pretty easy. First, you begin by adding your registered domain name here. So Rackspace is not a domain name registrar, um, but if you have a domain name registered elsewhere, you can transfer it to Rackspace to be served from our name servers. Um, so you add the, that domain's um, admin email address here. So let's go over uh, one of them I have here. Okay, so these are Rackspace name servers. And then, yep, you can choose to create any of the records here. So Cloud DNS is also a free service. Um, and you can choose to serve from um, Rackspace Cloud. Choose to serve your domain name from Rackspace Cloud's name servers. Okay, um, so moving on to storages. I've already gone over block storage volumes. One thing I should mention is that um, block storage volumes um, should be in the same data center as the server. And this applies for most of the cloud, uh, Rackspace cloud products. So for example, the load balancer should also be in the same data center as your servers. This is to avoid, um, you know, the extra charge from outgoing bandwidth, as well as, um, you know, the performance may be affected if you have that distance between your load balancer and your server. Uh, and similar for uh, block storage volumes. Um, so under storage, you can also see our object-based storage and CDN, that is cloud files. Okay, so cloud files, it's loading. All right, so you can create a container first. Uh, that's like a folder that holds your files. Again, you can choose uh, the region. And there's three different types. Private means only you can access it. Public enabled CDN. Um, so any files uploaded in this kind of container will automatically get distributed through the Rackspace um, ACMI CDN. We are partnering with ACMI 
uh, which is one of the largest content delivery network providers in the world with over 200 points of presence around the globe. Okay. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can click here. You can also host some static websites, uh, which, you know, uh, only has static HTML and images and so on um, in our cloud files. So I do have uh, some existing containers here. So you can see that you can update the time to leave field of your container to make sure, uh, depending on how often your um, files may change. Also, um, if you want to change the CDNs, um, you are, I'm sorry, if you want to change the container's URL to your desired URL, like example.com, you can use a domain's uh, CNAME record um, and set it to this target. So let's go into the container. I have some image files uploaded here. Um, so if you click here and click on view all links, you'll be able to um, see all the links. So if you have any video or audio files, you can see the streaming links. Um, sorry. This means... Um, Okay, so this is the image file I have here. Um, of course, if you change this file, then you can refresh the file to uh, propagate the change throughout the CDN network. Okay, um, so that was uh, the storage um, then database. Um, click on MySQL instance. So this is uh, only for MySQL uh, for the US data centers, we also have MariaDB and Falcona, which are different uh, optimized versions of MySQL. So this is like a database as a service. Um, with uh, it, It's a server at the back end, uh, but uh, it's managed by us. Uh, so all the patches, um, you know, any maintenance on the database, everything is going to be done by Rackspace. So, and it has a very good performance um, and the pricing is also pretty reasonable compared with if you had a date, you know, if you took a server and configured as database, that would probably cost more than this. So this is something you can take a look at, uh, but keep in mind, um, it might not be very good if you need to have a lot of custom SQL queries. Okay. Um, under database, you will also see Hadoop cluster. So that's uh, the Rackspace big data platform. And it does have some um, guidance for you to help you choose. Okay, so if you have that kind of requirement, you can go ahead and explore that. Uh, under databases, you will also see um, Object Rocket, right? So this is another product offered by Rackspace. Um, since I'm not a member of Object Rocket, I can't show you here. But basically, um, Object Rocket is a uh, MongoDB and Redis as a service. It's very high performing, very fast, um, automatically uh, can be scaled up and down automatically. So take a look at that. It has free 30 day trial, I believe. Um, yep, so it's pretty good. Um, we've already gone over orchestration and backups. So let's go for backups. Um, so you will only see your um, you know, root folder of your server in under backup if you have a backup agent installed in your servers, uh, which I don't have right now, so I can't show you, but um, basically you need to start by installing the backup agent. It's pretty easy. You just copy paste the command line codes there, and then you click on configure a backup, 
and you'll be able to see the details, right? So we'll try to record another video with uh, more details on backup options to give you more background on this, but basically it's pretty straightforward as you can see. So do feel free to explore these options. Um, if you have any questions at all, reach out to, um, you know, hkonboarders at rackspace.com. And you can also call in at plus 852-6452-6487. Thanks for watching uh, today's video.